A very good evening once again, and I apologize for the inconvenient cause during my presentation today. However, I would like to take a short time to present my paper through this audio. My name is Iran Komlehemang, PhD scholar of Queen Mary's College, and today's presentation is on the topic of trauma of war victims from the hills of Nagaland based on the experience of the war victims who were in prisons as well as faced the atrocities of Indian Army. Uh, I will not be talking on a particular person or book today, but an original collection which is a first-handed information relating to the Indonaga war with India government. I will be focusing more on the active surveillance of Indian Army towards the Naga Freedom Fighter, which led to the destructions of the entire village and the people, and how the people were imprisoned and tortured to dig out the information of the Naga Freedom Fighters. I will also be focusing on the traumas of the war victims that leads to the surveillance of the very act of Indian Army. To begin with, I would like to start with the history of the Naga's people, the origins of the Naga, nature of the people, and their occupations, and how Naga is considered as a warrior. The Naga are a population of Mongolian descendants who presently reside toward the northeastern frontier of Indian subcontinent. This group of related tribes occupy a contiguous region spread across the present-day Indian state of Nagaland, Assam, Manipur, and Arunachal Pradesh, and across the international borders in Myanmar. Though the Naga people had trade and military relationship with the neighboring kingdoms such like the Ahoms, Manipur, and the Burma, they remained in a relative isolation and enormities till the early 19th century. The British colonizations of India led to the deeper incursions and explorations of Naga territory in the early of 90s and the 20th century. Upon their discovery by the British, the Naga tribe became widely popular for the practice of head hunting. The nature of the people of Naga, their practice of agriculture, and traditions and customary law, meat and folklores, food, clothes, value, lifestyle, etc., and other aspects which define their social system was vastly different from those seen in the mainland India. The Nagas are comprised of many tribes, such as Sumi, Al, Angami, Chekesan, Lota, Kenimga, Ziliang, Chang, Regma, Sangtam, Konyak, Pom, Puchi, Yemchungar, etc. Each tribe having their own historical and cultural identities. The differences in language, traditional attire, histories, festive, food, folklores, and festival, among other things, mark out the differences between the Naga tribes. Though every tribe has their own language with greater interactions and exchange among the people. In the present days, English and Nagamese has been adopted as the common language of the community and English is considered to be the official language of Nagaland. Despite the differences, the Naga people share a common history of migrations and settlement and share culture aspects common with each other. There are emphasizes through the folklores passed down by the ancestor form. Generation to generations, the oral tradition is a definitive feature of Naga society. Naga language are notable for the absence of written form. However, every tribe and every village of Naga has its own rich and diverse body, a folklore narrative which has been preserved and transmitted over generations by the elders and storytellers. The oral mode of narration is an important way in which the Naga has preserved their culture history and their collective memory. It, it, was a, 
It was an important way of transmitting tradition, knowledge, and regional history to the younger generation. The relevance of oral narrative as an important source of information for understanding Naga culture, society, and history is being increasingly acknowledged by the scholars and researchers. The Naga is considered as a warrior. In the olden days, young Naga boys spend their time together in the morong until they get married. During their stay in the morong, they are taught craft and life skill as well as fighting and war tactics. They are also told stories about the tribes and the custom by their elders. They were separate morons for boys and girls. Women were not allowed to enter the boys' moron as well as the boys were not allowed to enter the bedroom or dormitory of the girls in those olden days. In this way, the moron also serve as an educational institution for the young people, both boys and girls. Every village practiced the head huntings to protect the village from their enemies during those days. The only way to acknowledge a person as the strongest warrior in the village or region or the area was by collecting the head of the enemy as many as he can to achieve the title of the strongest warrior. For example, like in the present days, the army is the army is given an award called Rama. Vir Chakra, which is a similar kind of award to the Naga society during the olden days to achieve the title of strongest warrior, have a name in the society as the strongest warrior to the tribe or from the region. Narrating the wars between Indian Army and Naga freedom fighters. Dramas of the victims, struggle of the Naga village under the surveillance of Indian Army, the war which broke out between the Indian Army and Naga Freedom Fighter in the year 1955 to 1964 is one of the fiercest battles that the people of Naga came across after the war with the Japanese people. The NNC which is called the Naga Nationalist Council, was formed in the year 1946 in Woka. And with these newly formations of these organizations, the Naga seek and plead for independence from the British government as well as from the Indian government. And finally, on 14th August, after the British left India, the leader of INC, Mahatma Gandhi, declared the independence of Naga people a day before the independence of India in the year 1947. However, after the independence of India, the Indian government was not willing to let go of the people from its constitutions. Therefore, the rivals began an Indian army with their surveillance and their spy started to hunt down the freedom fighter one after the other, leading the extreme work to the harassment of the entire village as well as the Naga freedom fighter. The Naga freedom fighter is not just an army or just a police or nothing like that, but they are just a normal farmer and a civilian who is fighting for his own land, own village, in for his own people. However, this act of defending one's own village or people leads to the suffering of the entire village rather than a particular person. The invasions of the village began and villages were burned down from one village to another which led to the struggle of the entire village and the women and children were the victims of Indian army as the men, in spite of big or small, needs to protect the village from the attack of Indian army during those days. So they had to stay away from home, guarding the house, guarding the village gate to protect the motherland and the people of the village from the attack of the Indian army. 
During those days, the children were separated from their mothers, the mothers were separated from their children and their husbands, and they live a miserable life fleeing into the jungle because of the army, because of the Indian army's attack. The children were separated from their mothers and their parents and their fathers, and the wife lost their husbands while they the husband defends the land and they had to flee to the jungle for safety. We can also see the surveillance that lead to the trauma of the people in many ways and in many villages of Naga Hills. In the chaos of the war, the women and children were the most victimized during the war as the child lost their parents and the women were the prey of the armies during those days. The Indian army having noticed the activity of the Naga, which was informed by the spy of the Indian armies, they had to march toward the Naga hills on the very next day and they reached towards Mokochung district and they entered in one of the Owl village and they found that there was a lot of freedom fighter who worked, who worked together to attack the Indian army. They found all the Naga freedom fighter that was gathered on that very village and they captured all the freedom fighter as well as the people that are serving them. And one among them was a woman named Mayan Kokla, referred from the Damsulas Tem Outwork, this is her home who was an obedient lady to her family, to her village, and she was serving the Naga freedom fighter when she was captured by the Indian army. She was taken to the battalion camp and she was sexually abused by the entire battalion for a week and she was released back to her village. However, the trauma of being a abused sexually by the entire battalion for a week has psychologically disorder and for many years until she passed away that haunted her with the trauma for the rest of her life. Similarly, in one of the Zilyang village, when the army came looking for the Naga freedom fighter, they read and abused a family of a young girl who was only 13 years old. 13 years old, she was raped by three army in front of her parents while the army held her parents hostage. There were many incidents where the woman had to deliver the child on the run from the Indian army. Some survived and some died on the process as there was no one to help them for to deliver the baby during the crucial moment which is a horrible death for both the babies and the mothers. The children had to live as an orphan witnessing their parents being killed brutally in front of them and being beaten up badly, and the woman had to live as a widow during those days. The terror of Indian army during the war. The mighty Indian army marched to every corner of the Naga village hunting down every single freedom fighter who ever come across their way. One of my interviews said they sound like the cattle running towards the field to feed. Whenever they enter the village, the villagers fear and tremble to their knees and beg the army to let them go, but the armies will not listen to them and will do whatever they want to do and whatever they please to do. They would have walked from village to village and burned down churches and all the mor morongs, which is the prized possessions of the Naga tribe. They would burn down all the important monuments and many had lost their ancestral gift passed down from the generations to generation. Many ornaments and art crafts has been burned down into ashes, which was preserved for centuries. In the year 1956, the village of Ntu, Naga village, was attacked by the entire by the entire troop of Indian army, and the entire village was bombed and the sound of the killing and the attack was 
as if it was the second coming of Christ, said one of the eyewitness, Mr. Corinda, my one of my interviewee. It was, it was like a worst nightmare that he had came across. As he mentioned, remembering what had happened to his relation to his own brothers, to his own family during those wars. Another village called Bungo, Nagaland, was also bombed and the entire village was taken into prison by the Indian army and they were kept hostage and the people were not allowed to do anything as they were surrounded by the armies from all across the prison king. The Naga prisoners struggled in the prison as they had limited food and the food that was given to them were scarcely eatable which made the children get sick and some even died in the prison came itself every evening the men folk were taken for questioning they were interrogated about the whereabout of the naga soldiers and their camps if they did not get the answers to what they want to know they would beat and torture the men folk until they were released from the prisons to the village even after the release from the prison came, some of the men were taken by the Indian armies and sent to fight against their own brothers in the battle. Some survived, some died, and some never returned home, while the mothers and the fathers and the daughters and the sons kept waiting for the fathers to return home so that they can live a peaceful life. But the story never came true. As their loved ones die during the battle that was fought against their own brothers and against the Indian army, the story was never a happy ending for many of the children, many of the people in the village as they keep waiting for their loved ones to return, but they never did return. This battle cry had had devastating effect on the life of Young children and women, children were permanently mere for life. Weakness, guns home, sin or violence, and in many cases, being reduced to orphan at a young age. The continued conflict which surrounded them, which surrounded them, made it impossible for them to return to a normal life. Their innocence of childhood and the beauty of youth were completely torn apart by the wars. Children never got a sufficient upbringing. Most often they struggle against starvation. Their youth was forever lost in the midst of violence and their life took a different old because of the war. Women from across the Naga village ended up suffering under the hands of the Indian army. They were tortured, raped and even killed mercilessly. As in one of the village, we see that a young girl named Rose from Okro district, presently, present day Manipur, had committed suicide after she was being raped by several army officers in her village. At the time, she was engaged to a young man of her own village and was looking forward to start a new life with her husband, but the violations so traumatized her and filled her mind with a guilt and shame that she could not bear to stay alive with the memories of the violence she was subjected to. Before her suicide, she talked to her best friend about her guilt and humiliation. Her best friend had narrated her expressions in a poem titled Before Suicide. She wrote a note Stating, let this dark day go from my mind and let the day that I was born be bolted away from memory. To save me from being left forlorn, my soul, my body lies in share. My faith in mankind all betrayed. I cry to heaven for justice, for nowhere else can I be done. And I denounce those last full brutes before the great celestial throne. Dear ones, grieve not for what I have done, for it is to Jehovah rest 
that I now go to wait for you where all the worries are at rest. All the traumas that was faced by the mankind during this war, by the Naga people, by the Naga society, was such a traumatic war that no one can even imagine what would have happened to them. But there is always a sunshine, there is always a ray of hope after the night. So the elders of the Naga had decided to sign off the peace treaty with the Indian government after the many battles fought against the Indian army. Finally, the leader of Naga had decided to end the terror of the people and decided to live a peaceful life in harmony in the year 1960. Moiva signed the peace accord with the Indian government on behalf of nationalist socialist councils of Naga, Isaac Moeva, and SCN. In spite of all the chaos and struggle people had faced in the past, Naga had its own recognized flag and an independence day to be celebrated like any of the other neighboring country. Today, Nagaland is celebrated as the pride of northeastern part of India. That's how I would and my presentation, Buknalim. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful night.